Okay, welcome everyone to another Thursday night at New Beginnings 2 at Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministry, where our pastor and overseer is Doris Harrell. And tonight we will be going over step six. And the spiritual principle behind step six is acceptance. And pastor, could you put the uh, PowerPoint on? Okay. Thank you. The declarations, please. Can everyone can see those? Yeah. Can everyone see those declarations? There, but I can't see. Too small of a print. They're, uh, they're too small of a print. I can see them pretty good. Yeah, I, I see like, them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, Vicky, can you uh, squeeze your screen to make it bigger? So can everyone see? Uh, Brother Eddie, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, I okay. can see it. Okay. Okay. I want to do an exercise uh, before we get started and get into our lessons. I want to, um, everyone to take about three to four minutes and look over one of the declarations. And then I want you to choose one and I want you all to uh, declare them before we get started. So just take a couple of minutes and look over them and choose one. And then I'll just call on uh, each one unless someone wants to volunteer. You have a volunteer. So who's the volunteer? Go forth then. Brother e Eddie. Brother I Eddie. I am a new creature. I am a new creature in Christ. In Christ Jesus, all things have gone. All things are new. Amen. Oh, no. Go, go ahead, Sister Nona. I have the mind of Christ. I think his thoughts and do the things he did and done. Amen. Sister Pam, you want to go forward? Okay. I'm a tither and a giver, free will offering. And I have a heavenly bank account. Hey, glory. Okay. Sister Vicki, you want to go forth? Can you see? Okay, I'll go forth. Jesus Christ is the center of my life, and I, I long to be intimate with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have one. All right, Pastor, go for I walk in the God kind of love and in Jesus' name. I forgive all who do me wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We have Miss Jeanette. She's on tonight. 
she just would you like to go forth or are you just I am abundantly blessed to be a blessing to my church and to others in need. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for your participation. And I did that because um, when, we, when we began to, um, well, the step says we are entirely ready to have God remove all defects of character. And in order for us to do that, we have to come in agreement to what he says. And we've been talking about the positional and experiential truth in, in the lesson prior, but now we're coming to the acceptance part. That's the spiritual principle behind this step. And acceptance is the act of consenting to receive something offered. And so we ask, what is being offered? Is Jesus himself. And so in that, we have to understand our nature and what he's able to do. And so I'm going to read in Romans 7 and 24, where it says, oh, wretched man that I am. See, Paul, he understood his condition and his need for God. And so I'm going to read that out of the Amplified Bible. It says, oh, unhappy and pitiful and wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the shackles of this body of death? And so when we realize our condition, we come to a place that, number one, that we will realize that we can do nothing apart from the Lord that our condition is so dire that we need God's help. And the third thing is, is that he is willing and is able and ready to help us. So what do we have to do when we get entirely ready to have God remove all these defects? We have to understand that God is calling us to nothing less than total surrender. So what do we have to do? Stop running. You got it, Pastor? We have to stop running. And could someone um, get Proverbs 14 and 12? Yeah, we have to start, stop running from God and just surrender our will to him in order for us, for us to um, come up out of bondage because we know that he is the key. He's the only key. Do I have a volunteer? I have it, Sister Dianetta, Sister Nona. All right, so read Proverbs 14 and 12. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes, thank you. And so in that, you know, we may think that, you know, everything, you know, before, well, we were doing whatever we were doing or in bondage, you know, it seemed right. It seemed the, the, the way in which we should go, but we know for sure at the end of it, it was nothing but destruction, sadness, uh, pain, and everything else. And so what God is just calling us to is to, he asks us to confess our sins. Why? Because we're just agreeing with what he already knows. And so therefore, when we come in agreement with him, he's able to protect us. He's able to cover us. Even when Satan comes to be the accuser, which we know he alive, but he's also an accuser. And when somebody accuses you of something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. And so therefore, when we acknowledge and come in agreement with God, he said, get on back, Satan. I got this. This is what I went to the cross for. So there's nothing to fear and nothing to worry about. We just have to come in agreement with what God says about it. The positional is true. So we may experience what he has called us to do. And so, so now we've stopped running. And so we're going to go to Psalms 119 and 59. Do I have a reader? Psalms 
Psalms 119 and 59. You have to unmute yourself if you are going to read. Unmute you yourself. Go. Okay, well, then I'll get it. So. I have it since then, then I'll give it to somebody else a chance to get it. Okay, you can go. I have it. Psalms 119.59. I thought... Yep. On my way and turn my feet until I write testimonies. Yes, so we have to go in, in the way of the Lord. That's what that, that's saying is that we have to think about, you know, our condition and what it is that we need from the Lord and um, being just continue to surrender. Because I tell you, when you begin to um, surrender your your will to the Lord and 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 uh, begin to come in agreement, there's going to be challenges, you know, because first of all, the enemy don't want us out of bondage. He want us to be right with him. And so when we get begin to confess and understand who we are in the Lord, oh, there's going to be some, some uh, resistance, but you have to remain in the Lord, keep your feet and your mind stayed on him because if not, then there's going to just be more sadness, more friction going to and fro. But that's not the that's not what the Lord desires for us. That's why we have to be entirely ready just to surrender our will to him, to acknowledge that we are his children. There's nothing greater on this earth than us being children of God. I mean, you, it don't matter if it's the president, you think how, how their children feel. They, they, they seem to be in a good position, but there's nothing greater on this earth than being a child of God. And so well, how do we get there? We have to know and understand who God is, what his promises are and what he has for us. And so we have to continue in the way of the Lord. And so, and I'm going to go to the, uh, the scripture, uh, Philippians 3, 1 and 4. I'm going to read that. And I'm going to say amen and amen, and I'm excited. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lord. This is what we got to understand. There is no other position on this earth than being a child of the most high. And when you think about that, it don't get no better. So we have to live according accordingly. So I'm going to read Philippians 1 through 14. And it reads, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the conscious, conscious, is that right? Yeah. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinking that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, a, a Pharisee Wait a minute. Yeah. concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteous, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were to gain to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellence, ex, excellent Excellence, excellence, excellency, <laughs> the excellency of yeah. the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for who I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I might Christ. Glory. And, and it goes to 14 and be found in him, not having my own righteousness 
which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count it not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, yeah, so we have to continue to learn of our Lord, stop running from him, surrender our will to him, and begin to, uh, you know, learn of him so that we can stand against all, the, you know, the, the, the trials and everything that may come our way, you know, because there's going to be trying, especially when you have to learn a new way of living, because coming out of bondage, there's things you have to, you have to just relearn the way. You have to relearn the way of Christ, and it's written right in his word. Every instruction, everything that you may face in this life is in the word, and this is where it's at. This is where our Lord Jesus Christ, where his word, his love letter to us to keep us from harm's way, danger, stress, anything. It's all in his word. And so we have to just, you know, just totally surrender and come in agreement and accept what he has for us. And so, and how do we do that? We have to be born again. We have to be born again. And, um, this is um, what they overcame the blood of the lamb by his test by our, the blood of the lamb. And um, it states that, you know, we must be born again. We have to be born again. And so, um, as again, you switch that screen. And this is, uh, you know, most of this, everything in this step is really a re reiteration of what we've already, you know, went over. But, um, you know, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies and we love not our lives unto death. And so with all that, you know, we have to trust that God is able and we have to share that, you know, what has God done for, for us, you know, and what will he continue to do? And that's all based on what we know of him and what he says about us and coming in alignment with that and walking it out. You know, will it be easy sometimes? Will it be always easy? Most of the time not, but it's doable. You know, we don't have to be afraid of coming out of any bondage because he already told us, you know, he has us, we are his, and there is nothing missing and nothing broken, but we have to come into agreement. And part of that is being born again, saying what he says about us, believing it, walking it out, trusting him, continue to uh, kill this flesh daily, surrendering our will to him, walking what he says, how we should walk, you know, not leaning to our own understanding, hiding his word in our heart. So when them days of trouble come up, you don't get nothing but the word. If you exercise your word muscle and you put this word in you, when them time come, you gonna have a muscle that's gonna be powerful and that is through this Bible, this word. Because even when Jesus was tested, what he say? It is written. It's all written. So your, your, your acceptance and agreement comes through studying this word getting understanding about this word, making it applicable to your life. 
And part of that is what we have to do. You have to be born again. You have to believe that Jesus Christ went to that cross. He died. He rose again. And he did it for us. That our sins are forgiven. We don't have to continue to replay that mental Rolodex of how bad we are and what we did and this and that. Oh, I shouldn't have did this. No. He said, no, if you're going to think on some things, think on those things that are pure, that are lovely, because all that negativity and it don't mm -hmm. line up with a word, it will wear you out. Amen. And so we just have to trust God, learn of his ways, learn what he say we are in this word. Forgetting what the world say or what your circumstances or what your mind tell you at night when you lay down, you better get this word and understand that this is the most beautiful love letter that was ever written. And it's to us, the children of the king. And so I'm going to close and just pray that we all continue in his way, come in agreement declare what he says about us and uh, walk out in your kingdom purpose. And that's it, Pastor. I just... That's wonderful. So now here's your, uh, the homework. Can y'all see it? Yes. Okay. So you wanna explain the homework uh, to him, Deaconess? Yes. So for the homework for step six, it says, in your own words, explain three things that it takes to overcome the devil according to Revelations 12 and 11 and what they mean. Part A of number one, write them down, put it in a format as if you were trying to explain it to someone that needs to know this truth. Number two, I mean, uh, part B, come prepared to share with the group next week what you wrote. And number two, I turned my feet in Psalms uh, 119 and 59. What does that mean? And fill in the blanks. Entirely ready means nothing less than blank. Uh, now I'll go back and show you. Entirely ready means nothing less. Because uh, you ready. should have this here lesson. It means ready. nothing less than right there. Surrender. Total surrender. That yeah, don't mean that. Don't mean halfway surrender. One foot with the devil. One, it means total. <laughs> Amen. Entirely ready. Remember that step. We are entirely ready. We ready to give it up to God. We sick and tired of being sick and tired. Hallelujah. Die every, <laughs> everything. We ready for God now. Amen. Amen. I think that's beautiful, Deaconess. I want to point out one thing. Uh, let me see if I can find where that was. It was in, uh, oh, wait. Let's see. Where is that? Uh, um, apprehended. Uh, oh, Philippians 3. I just want to point out something there. Uh, testimony of mine in Philippians 3, verse 12. Jesus ran me down. So Philippians 3, verse 12. The Lord Jesus Christ himself ran me down, just like he running y'all down. That's what he does. He apprehends us. He draws us with loving kindness. And so it says here in verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which I am also, I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So now it's my turn to apprehend him. It's my turn. I'm running after the Lord. I'm running after him. He ran me down. He wouldn't let go, just like he, all of us. Jesus Christ ran us down. He just kept drawing us with loving kindness. He kept bringing people across our path. He kept doing great things to us. And then now what we do for this total surrender, you have to stop and say, here I am. You have to stop running, turn around and face the Lord and now start running him down. 
That's what that means. Now I'm doing the apprehended. <laughs> he was apprehending me, and now I'm running after the Lord. I'm running fast as I can. Ooh, I want him. I want you, Lord. Hallelujah. So oh. that's a beautiful lesson, Deacon S. God bless you. And uh, anybody want to make a comment before we close? Y'all understand your homework? Do we need to go over it again, or you, you got it? Everybody got it? Say yay or nay. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. All right. Sister Pam, understand it, got it. So next week when you come back, let me, let's look at I want you to see something. Because next week you're going to be, uh, this is, uh, let's see here. You're going to get to that homework. You are going to speak to someone right here where it says uh, oops in, in that, that number one in your homework where it says in your own words explain the three things it takes to overcome the devil which you find in Revelation 12 and 11 and what it means so you got to explain what that means write it down put it in a format as if you was trying to explain to someone who needs to know the truth so you're going to come and you can explain to me, pretend I don't know nothing about God, but I'm miserable and I need I need something. So you're going to tell me how I can overcome the devil. Amen. So that's what we're going to do next week. You're going to pick somebody and you're going to tell them in your own words. This is what you need to do. Amen. You ain't but one way you can overcome the devil, not through the blood, first of the blood of the lamb. And you're going to explain what that means. The word of your testimony, you're going to explain that means. And you love not your life to the death. You're going to explain what that means. So write it down and come on and, and, and share that gospel with them. Because there's a lot of hurting people out there. And uh, so we have to be prepared. We're preparing to help somebody with what we already know. So this is a very good exercise for that. Okay, y'all understand that? Or is that, is that clear? Step one? Yep. Okay. Yes, okay. You and Sister Pam, that's clear? Yes, ma'am. All right, then. I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> I'll be one of those people that I don't know nothing, but I just know I'm miserable. <laughs> and you're going to tell me what, how to get out that misery. Okay. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Deaconess. It was beautiful. I'm going to stop the, stop the share and... Uh, I'm going to stop the recording at this point, and we're going to give God the praise. I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to ask.